Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater. And oh my god, uh, Yoda. Yoda's back in the news. This time with a whole new rumor surrounding him, right? Now, we saw Yoda pop up in The Last Jedi. It was unexpected, but it was cool. And the fact that Frank Oz voiced him again brought all sorts of feels to my heart, even if I didn't necessarily care much for the scene itself. I didn't really care much for the scene because I felt like that whole arc with with Luke Skywalker in general just kind of felt like grumpy old man syndrome like very much like Clint Eastwood and Gran Torino get off my lawn that sort of thing and it just I don't think it really worked for Luke people have told me to rewatch the movie a few more times and maybe I'll get it I I, I don't know but I mean again seeing Yoda was cool Frank Oz cool down for some more Yoda because I loved him uh, you know, prequels, right? Like them. Clone Wars. Uh, Love the, 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 the little bit he was in in Rebels. Uh, good stuff. But this new rumor is interesting because it, it comes from uh, a very, very, very unlikely source. Now, in movie, movie Web reports on here by saying The Last Jedi may have received a lot of hate from long-term Star Wars fans, but one moment that almost everyone enjoyed was Yoda. After this positive reception to the Force Ghost, a rumor has it that Lucasfilm is planning on bringing Yoda back in a larger role for Star Wars Episode Nine, where he will give mentorship to Rey as she continues to grow in her strength. The rumor first surfaced from the New York Daily News, who claimed to have an anonymous inside source who was connected to Episode 9. Now, this is what they say. They say the success of the scenes featuring Yoda and The Last Jedi were huge. Yoda will again appear as a ghost as he acknowledges Rey's success and growth as a Jedi. The scenes are due to be put together later this year. Okay, so... Do we... Are, are, we, are we going to accept this as real? For one, I don't know, right? J.J. Abrams is clearly a lover of nostalgia and is clearly wanting to, in my opinion at least, going to want to try to bring that back around for Episode 9, right? Because, you know, Episode 7 relied pretty heavily on it, and it worked. Episode 8 had a little bit of it, but in all the wrong places, Episode 9 is probably going to do its best to try to right the ship, at least for the conclusion. And bringing back Yoda would be a very good thing. Now, we know the other day Mark Hamill had said that he's basically done with it. He says he's okay with moving on. Han Solo was dead. Carrie Fisher is dead. You can't really get the gang back together, even though I believe that was probably what George Lucas wanted to do with his original vision for the for the final trilogy. And I get that. So how would you, if, if Luke is gone, if Luke never did the training to become a Force ghost, even though he could Force project himself halfway across the freaking galaxy... Sure. Um, then uh, then it would be Yoda, because we know Yoda is a ghost. We saw this, obviously, at the end of Return of the Jedi, and we saw this in Episode Eight. So he's still around, and he could be the one that does help train. But when Luke was told by Obi-Wan to go see Yoda, it was because he needed Yoda to train Luke, right, in order to become the last, you know, the, the basically the last Jedi. He needed it, and Yoda trained him. So is Yoda going to train Rey? Are we going to get a montage scene of him riding on her back and like beating her with a cane? <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think we're going to get that at all. And him showing up just to just to give her praise about how well she's doing and her, her success and how strong she is. I don't like that either. There has been a real big uh, pushback against Rey now for three years where everyone's like, she's just a Mary Sue. Everyone likes her. Everything she does is perfect. And I've been a staunch defender against that. I don't think that she is. I think that there's a lot there uh, just given the context of her background, where Jakku is, how she's grown up, that helped mold her as a character. Yes, we didn't get to see all of it, but I think it's there in subtext. People disagree and that's okay. But when it comes to this particular aspect of it, if he is going to sit there and just kind of pat her on the back, give her a metaphorical gold star and tell her you're doing wonderful or wonderful doing you are or whatever. That's just, I don't really like that. I, I don't. Cause I feel like it's just, I feel like that specifically is not only just pandering nostalgia, but antithetical to who Yoda would be at his core. Yoda, being the Jedi Master that he was, how many, how old he was, he would not sit there and blindly praise somebody who just happened to be doing well in her training. Because who at this point is effectively training her? She does have the books from the tree, 
Sure. So she can read up on the Jedi religion and, and self-teach herself, or she can work to destroy it. And, and Yoda even kind of hinted at the Jedi religion being destroyed, the, the tree burning and everything else. But he also knew that she had the book. So he was just messing with, with Luke a little bit. So maybe he doesn't fully believe that. So if, if she is meant to, you know, be the balance to Kylo and Kylo is not really a Sith or, or a Ren anymore, I guess. I don't know yet. We haven't got any explanation on that either. That's another thank you, Ryan. But if, if she's going to become more like the gray Jedi and, and not really assign herself to the religion and to the teachings, then why would Yoda show up just to give her praise, just to say like, yeah, you're doing good kiddo. Awesome. Good job. Pat on the back. Gold star. You know, it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't think this rumor is legit. Don't get me wrong. I am totally down for there to be like a scene in the movie, very reminiscent of Empire or of Return of the Jedi. When, you know, Rey looks off and she sees Yoda and she sees Luke and maybe Anakin and and I don't know, maybe maybe just those two. And that's totally fine. All right. She sees both of them and that'd be cool. And if he wants to appear in the movie, whatever, like I could imagine him and Luke kind of becoming like her trainers as she's, as she's working, they appear to help her because they know what's coming. They know how bad Kylo is and she does too, but she's not uh, prepared enough. I mean, cause Kylo, not only did he have his uncle training him, right? When he went to Snoke, Snoke made him the master of Ren, gave him his little sub Arnie that we've never seen and then taught him, uh, the ways of the force, the ways of being the Sith and all that jazz when Ray's had none of that. And, and if they just over, if they overlook or they skip over her training, I will not be able to defend against the commentary that she is a Mary Sue because that's just completely going up in, in another direction from, from what her character should do. And I hope they don't do that. I really hope they don't do that, but I, I feel I feel like that's the way it's going for the sake of trying to condense the storyline down to not spend a lot of time. Because if you look at the original trilogy, right, episode four, Luke discovers he is, you know, the son of a Jedi. Okay. Episode five, Luke then goes and gets trained. Cool. Episode six, Luke is now trained. Luke is now a master. I don't know who really gave him... I mean, I know it's in the books he became a master. They kind of explain that, but that's all legend stuff now. That's not canon. So, I mean, like, are we going to get any of that here? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm arguing over the wrong thing. Maybe I'm looking at this all wrong. I'm trying to argue the continuity of, 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 of a space opera series. You know, is it really that big of a deal? And the answer to that is probably not. And I acknowledge that. But at the same time, because I'm a writer, because I like, I like a solid narrative, I like to see these things play out. I'm a little bit you know, little kind of like, don't, don't mess around too much here, man, because it can go the wrong way faster than you think. And audiences are already going to go into episode nine, extremely, uh, you know, kind of like, uh, I think at arm's length, I think a lot of people are going to go in at arm's length and they're going to go in with their expectations set low. And the last thing you want to do is feed into those lower expectations by, by having horrible character decisions because we've already seen that in the last movie and how well did that turn out? Right. But anyway, what do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comments below. I'm curious to know your thoughts. My name is of course, Matt Jarbo. This has been three buck theater. If you haven't already thumbs up the video, subscribe to the channel and check back often for more content for me. In fact, if you want to see more from me, you can do so right now.